Hi, this is Vic with HumanElement.com, and in this tutorial, I am going to talk about how to utilize RGB mats for uh, materials in Cinema 4D. Usually, RGB mats are, you know, used uh, for uh, creating mats for objects, but I wanted to focus more on creating mats for materials. So, let me give you a quick example of what I'm talking about. All right, so here is a here's a scene. Client is happy with it and uh, here's a, a render and you use GI for this it's gonna take a while right this is a final beauty shot and next day a client comes in and they're like hey uh, we don't like the red and we don't like the black can we change those colors you know this is hard to do because typically you know if you create a buffer or a mat for these objects right you're gonna get something like this here's the buffer all right, I did that using the compositing tag, created a buffer, and it creates this map. But there's no access to the actual material. All right, there's no way yet in Cinema to create a, a, a buffer uh, pass for materials. You can just create them for the objects, so the overall object. So that's where an RGB pass comes in handy, especially for materials. Um, you're limited to three colors. Let me just open this up. All right, you have. Uh, red blue and green and those are the primary colors no other colors can make those so you're limited to only three colors and what I did here first things first is let's say again this is the final shot you want to save out your final shot so save this out and call this uh, you know uh, beauty final whatever you want to call it it's final all right or when you when you do this kind of workflow you're gonna have to render it twice there's no way to kind of do the RGB pass and you know render it out with in the same frame or in the same project as your beauty file so you're gonna have two separate files but the cool thing is, is the RGB passes render out really quick so this scene here for instance with ambient occlusion turned on it does it's not on right now but with the global illumination ambient occlusion it took you know a few minutes to render out the frame especially of one computer it takes a while but and that's because there's lights, there's occlusion, there's global illumination. But with RGB passes, you don't need any lights. You can just get rid of the lights. You can get rid of everything except for the object. And you apply your RGB shader to them. And then just render that out. And save the save the project out first as a, you know a RGB pass. And then render both of the... Um, you can put them both in, in the render queue. And then, you know... So your beauty is going to render first, and your RGB mat's going to render second. So, and this one's pretty quick to render. So anyway, let's set this up, and I'll kind of walk through that as well, uh, the, the render part. Uh, so here's the shader for the candy cane. Okay, and this is inside the color. And let's go in here, and this is what makes that up. So we need to change these into RGB colors. Okay, so for this, I made three colors. You're, like I said, you're limited with RGBs to three colors So, for your mats. So what we need to do is make another shader or just change these colors, but we don't want to create these inside the color pass. The reason they're in the color pass is because in the color pass the material can accept light, but for the RGB pass I don't want them to accept light. I just want them to be full luminant uh, RGB. Okay, so what we need to do is you can just grab click on the color here or it depends on your setup right this is just the example we, you can always just grab see this little icon here I'm just going to grab that go into the luminance and I'm just I'm holding down my my uh, mouse button I haven't let go yet I'm going to drag it right on top of the texture all right let me do that again so I'm going to grab this little swatch here click on it and don't let go of the button I'm gonna hover over luminance and I'm gonna go into texture and drop it right on top of here and it's gonna copy that inside the luminance it's not on yet so anyway there's a copy I'm gonna shut down the color I'm gonna shut down reflectivity for this turn on luminance and there it is there's now with this since it's luminant it's not gonna accept any lights so we're gonna kill lights, your 
use my lights. We don't need those for this pass. And what else can we get rid of? All right, so I have a few objects here, sky, floor. We don't need that for this either. So it's just going to be the candy canes and the shader set to luminance. So with this going on, I'm going to double click on the swatch there, double click on this swatch here, and I'm going to go in here and change each one of these to uh, an RGB color, red, blue, or green. So the red, you want to make sure that's 100% red, and it isn't. All right, so this should say 255, 0, and 0. So let's change the green to 0. Click OK. And I'm going to go to the black. And whatever's black, I want the blacks to be I want the blacks to be blue. Okay, so make sure blue is set to 255 and red and green are set to zero. Alright, I'm just gonna go through here. Let me just go the long way and just <clears throat> I'm just gonna go through each one of them and change them. I want the whites to be set to green. So make sure reds are zero and blacks are zero. Okay, here's another white. I'm going to set that to green. Grab all your whites so you don't get confused here. Just do all the white ones first. White's green. Another white. Green. Another white. Set this one to green. So, And now the reds. Make sure that all the reds are 100% red. So kill the greens. Go into each one of these. Kill the green. Here's another red. Kill the green. Another red. Get rid of the green. And one more red at the end. Alright, and this is, like I said, it's important to make sure that these are all true RGB. So here's the black. So the black was blue. So I'm going to make this one 100% blue. And RNG to zero. And one more black. So 100% blue, R and G to zero. All right, so now we've changed all of those colors. They're all true, 100% red, blue, or green. And the only other thing we have is that, as you notice, the, the end caps here of my setup, uh, I used a, a sweet mercs to create the candy canes, and I put caps on them. So those are still white, and that's because if I open up the cloner here, each one of these caps, you got the top and the bottom cap, all right? You have to uh, apply a shader to them. And right now I have this white shader. Let's just apply a new shader. Here, I'm gonna, because I just double clicked in here, made a new material on me. And I'm going to make this material, click on luminance. And I want this to be, let's see, what color was. I want this to be green because I, the white was, I used green to, the, the green mat to be the white color. So let's, and this bottom here is white also. So let's change this to 100% green. Okay. So there is my green shader. And we're going to, drop this on top of the cap color here material and the other one too the top and the bottom caps there we go all right so this is our our uh, RGB shader and we're gonna save this out as a uh, um, RGB mat whatever you want to call it okay so once you do that let me just save this out here let me show you I'll put that right here Candy cane, RGB, candy. Okay. Let me open the original. Let me open the original file I had. Here's the original file. So what you want to do is go into your render queue. You can say add this to render queue. Okay, that's going to add that one to it. And then you can look for your other one and add it, your other file with the RGB. Add, open, and I saved it up here, I believe, for this one. There it is. And you can add, you, you can open this file, and now you have both of these inside the render queue. If you have team render, you can make sure that 
check those. I don't have it right now, but um, make sure to check these, and then let them go and let them render, and that'll render your beauty and your RGB. So once we have that, let's jump into After Effects. All right here is our let's make a new composition All right here's our beauty and let's bring in our RGB okay let's see here oh. let's bring this here we go alright so here's the RGB pass that we just created okay so let's how do we get access to uh, the RGB so we want to do here, not to the mats. A couple ways to do this, but I'm going to show you the easiest way. Is you can just hide this RGB layer. Make sure it's inside <coughs> your composition here. Uh, your comp. So we're going to go select your beauty pass. Go up to effect. Go to channel. Set mat. Okay. So once you set the mat. We want to gain access to, first of all, take the mat from which layer? You want to take the mat from the RGB layer. So make sure you select that. And then the first thing we're going to do is select the, the red channel. All right, so as you can see, as soon as I do that, there's the red. All right, we've isolated the red, which is great. That's what we want. All right, next thing we want to do, let's, uh, let's name this one Candy Cane. <clears throat> red stripe so we don't get confused and I'm going to change this little icon here to red just to make it easier on my eyes alright so let's duplicate this one and let's change this next one to candy cane uh, let's see blue blue stripe and let's change the little icon here to swatch to blue alright go up here to the blue to the set mat that you know we duplicated so it's up here again let's change this one to blue channel okay so if we hide that now we have let's uh, toggle the transparency grid as you can see there's the black stripes all right so that blue RGB mat gave us or the blue mat gave us the, the black stripes all right so now let's duplicate the blue one call this green you can change the names. This is just for, for for us to you know keep track of what's going on. We don't get confused. You can change these names here in a little bit. All right. So there's the green, and make sure you set that mat to green. All right. So it's, when you set that to green, as you can see, the entire candy cane has uh, is showing up now. Uh, if we isolate the green, that's what we get. The white stripes. There's the blue, and there's the red. All right. Let's duplicate the bottom layer one more time. You can bring that to the bottom. Get rid of the mat. All right. So now we have the original, and then we have the top colors. All right. The original at the bottom doesn't have any mat or anything set mat, or any effect. All right. That's just the bottom because we need the floor. All right. So now with this mat, the client comes in. He's like, "All right, let's change the colors," and you're like, "Certainly." All right. So let's pick. If we isolate this. Let's go way at the bottom. Let's start with a red stripe here. All right, so we're going to change this color. So you can use something like a hue and saturation. I'm going to go down here and click hue and saturation. And as you can see now, we can change this. Client says he wants us to be yellow. All right, how about orange yellow? That's good. We can change this to whatever we want on the fly. So let's change it to an orange yellow like the client wants. There we go. He goes, uh, can we change the the white to I don't know. Show me what you can do with the white. And I'm like, alright, let's do that. And we know we have access to the white, which is the green one. Alright, so we can go up here, go back to color correction. I'm gonna go to hue and saturation. And just dial this up a little bit. Like how about more of a you know give it yeah kind of like that kind of a yellowy hue to it we can crank this up a little bit saturation 
There we go. They want something more pink or red. You can see there's like a pink going through that. All right, and then the last thing he goes, I, I want to get rid of that black stripe. No problem. Go into the blue. And since this is black, it's a little harder. The blacks and the whites are a little harder to mess with uh, with the hue and saturation. Um, so I'm going to apply a tint to it. Okay. So I'm going to go down. You can't see it on the screen here, but I applied a tint. So anything that's black, I want it to be a different color. All right, so as you can see, it's changing there. So client's happy with just more of a maroon color. Let's see if we can find a maroon color. There you go. It's just a deep red, crimson or something. That's what he's happy with. All right, so it's not the, the nicest colors, but that's what they want. All right, so just like that, we just, you know, created the mats and we have more control. All right, so that's, uh, that's a quick way to do that. Uh, let's go back to the green stripe here which is the white you know let's get rid of the hue and saturation let's apply a tint to that one instead go to color correction tint so anything that's white we can change and make it a different color now so you have more control with the tint because you're actually tinting the color instead of just messing with the saturation so you know that's another thing you can do um, but it gives you some more control there we go. That's kind of nice. All right. So that's how uh, you utilize the RGB map for materials. Um, hopefully, this helps somewhat. And uh, and uh, that's it, guys. Thanks a lot for uh, tuning in. And um, I'll see you again in another tutorial. Bye.